Okay, we'll start off with the, the selection of uh, grinders I have up here. Start off over here. This is a, a draw a quarter cable uh, a wheel grinder that I got from Lowe's. It uh, came with silicon carbide wheels, and I replaced it with the Norton 3X wheels. Um, and it's got the uh, the Wolverine uh, uh, tag uh, grinding jigs uh, set up on it. This over here is something I made for the Tormac. This, this is a, uh, the uh, kit that you can buy from Tormac. It's called the uh, dry grinder conversion or something. Anyway, I can put that bar over here and use my, my Tormac tools and do the rough shaping over here because trying to do a rough shaping on the Tormac wheel is very slow. So I do the rough shaping over here with the bar over here and then I take it over there and, and keep it sharp over there on that one there. So that's what this is. And I made this with these are uh, removable plates that I can, I can easily switch them out and put, you know, the regular Tormac uh, sliding arm. You know, I got the mate to that and goes over here. I use either the arm or the platform. And then I got one of these that fits on that side also. So it's just a, a, a sliding platform that looks like I can quickly interchange the platforms. What grip wheels? Uh, this is a 46 and this is an 80. The, the course is 46 and the, and the fine is 80. Uh, then we come over to the to this uh, Sorby Pro Edge, which is a belt sand belt uh, grinder. Sometimes it's referred to as a linisher. Um, one of the advantages of this, you know, like I say, you got 46 and 80 grit wheels on here, and it's not a, not a simple thing to replace those wheels to get them balanced. Uh, no, it's another thing. I, I've got the uh, to make the, these this these wheels are balanced very well. I've got the uh, one-way wheel balancing system on here also. The benefit of this then is I can just very quickly replace the different grit belts and get different whatever grits I want or what from what they've got available, and uh, and easily easily swap the grit out. And the belts are relatively inexpensive. I think the these belts are about uh, you know depending which one's about $10 or $13 a piece for the belts. Would that be primarily for turning or sharpening uh, skews? That's what I use it for primarily is skews, right? And I, what I've got on here now is a, this is a, a um, Trizac, 600 grit Trizac belt. And then the next one is the Tormac, the draw, then this is a water. A water-cooled wheel. The run, the, it's a slower RPM. Runs. There's no dust from it. Uh, you don't even need to use eye protection. The wheel is running so slow that it doesn't throw sparks or, or, or grit and stuff at you. And then it's got the. the if you want to do um, uh, the, um, lapping, it's got the different wheels over here that you can put to, put the compound on and just flip this bar over and you can you can sharpen the tool here and then flip it over and and, and, and hone it or lap it over there on that side. Okay. So what's the equivalent of that Tormac? I don't know. It, it's got a, a grading bar. It's got a, a stone that comes with it. It's got a coarse on one side and a fine on the other side, so you can grade it to, diff, to either coarse or fine. Um, I typically just don't. Uh, it's got a. It, it, you you set fine this. Though, right? Yeah, it's fair, pretty fine. You, I'll show you show you the tool I come over there. I was but thinking they come as a six hundred. I don't know what it is, but you can put the bar up here. It's got a, a, a well, that's, that's another drawback, no, the drawback step up over here. Over here, you have to dress the wheel. You need a diamond dresser a dressing stone to dress the wheel. And you continually dress the wheel to, to, to because you'll get bits of medical, medical particles build up in there. And you need to dress it to make sure the wheel is round and also to get rid of the medical, metal particles. Over here, there's no dressing here. It's just you, want it, you, want it, uh, you, just, you just replace the belt. And then over here, for the dressing over here, they, it comes with, uh, I think, I think it one of the very, very few things come with it by default, but I think it comes with the, this goes up here and it's got a diamond on, on, a, on a knurled bar that runs back and forth it, it, and it makes the, uh, the wheel flat in and, and, and true 
parallel to the surface of this bar here. Any questions on any of the, any of the systems? What would you use a 40 grit for? 40 grit on, on here? Yeah. Well, that's, that's what's shaping. The 46 grit, I use the 46 grit wheel for shaping. Then I use the 80 grit wheel oh, for okay, shaping. Oh, okay, for shaping for, for when you make a new tool. For, 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 a profile, for a profile, putting the profile on the tool gotcha. initially. Okay, if, really I want, yeah. if I want to reprofile the tool, right, yeah, I, I use the, the, the 46 grit wheel for reprofiling and then the, 40, the 80 grit wheel for sharpening. The, uh, the Wolverine bear grind jig. This is the Wolverine bear grind jig. Okay. okay. And the settings on this is you, you, can, you can adjust the arm angle and you adjust the protrusion of the nose coming out of the front. These are the settings that you do on that. You going to speak to how to adjust that arm? Yes. I I looked online today and none of the videos that I can find. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you something to do. Good. Okay. So that that's the that's the Wolverine. And then then this is the, the David Ellsworth jig. There's no settings on that. The only thing you do on that is just adjust the nose protrusion. And that, that'll give you the, the swept back wing profile that David Ellsworth uses. It originally was introduced as the, by Liam O'Neill from Ireland. It's called the Irish Grind. And uh, then David and, and Liam O'Neill had, he had, the, the, he really swept the wings back a long ways. Well, David Ellsworth only swept, sweeps, swept, sweeps the wings back three quarters of an inch. And then this gives the profile that he advertises in his video and, and book. Which one do you like better? Well, I don't turn that many bowls. I've used David Ellsworth, and I've also used uh, 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 Grounds, a couple of things, things, things here to match uh, Glenn Lucas, is which I'm going to tell you about. Glenn Lucas has a similar grind, and he calls it the Celtic, because the Irish grind I've already taken. He's from Ireland. He calls it the Celtic grind. Okay, and then uh, on, on the... Uh, the, the, the Sorby, I didn't bring that jig with me. The, the Sorby comes with a tool that looks very, mu very much the same as this one, except that it doesn't have this, this pivot arm here, and it's got a collar down here. And that collar fits in, in, in this hole here. You put the collar in, in here, like or put, put the arm in there like that, and then that fits on this arm, this bar over here, like that the way around. It's on there like that. And so that's the way the, 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 the gouge jig would work on, on the Sorby. Now the way the Sorby comes, it doesn't give you any examples of, of how the tool should be ground. They say the tool comes set, preset to 120 degrees. And then you use this different hole here, whether you want a long swept back grind or, or the spindle gouge or long swept back grind. And then this down here is the, uh, you see they set the protrusion with this, with this, depending on the protrusion, that gives you the degrees of angle, which I, I, I don't really care for that idea. But that, that's, that's, Sorby, that's the Sorby method of doing that. And then over here, we have, th this is the, uh, now this isn't the one that came with the, the let's step back. The, the, the Tormac, I don't know if you ever looked at the price on the Tormac, but they're very proud of their equipment. And it doesn't come with very much stuff. The, what, what you see here, the, this is pretty much everything comes with the Sorby for about $500. Over here, this, this without anything is about $700. And then if you want the turning kit, that's about $320 or $50. Well, with the turning kit, you get, get a, a, gouge, a jig like this for, for doing uh, your, your gouges. You get a jig like this that you can use for doing skews. And then there's another, another V-block that goes in there that you can use for, for sharpening uh, your spindle roughing gouges and such. And I think that's, oh, and it comes with this also. This is a, it's called the turning tool setter. This is a multifunction tool here. You use this to, to adjust the profile, or the, the, the uh, protrusion. And then you put it up here on this to adjust the, the distance of the arm away from the wheel. And you adjust the wheel until, until you're, wheels turn. 
So that's how you set the, the, the distance on this one. You, you set the distance on here by depending which hole you put it in here and how far the, how far the nose is sticking out. That's the adjustment on that one. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think, oh, uh, and oh, it all, one also comes with a platform to, uh, to adjust for, for doing, it comes with the, v, the arm for, for supporting the, uh, the Varagrind jig. The arm fits in like that for supporting that type of that jig. And then you can also, that'll slide out and you put this, this platform in that you can adjust it for doing things like, you know, skews or scrapers or whatever with the, with the, sub, the uh, platform. Okay, what is sharp? When you have two planes meeting at a line that is zero width. So that depends, in a perfect world, both of these surfaces would be mirror smooth. Well, you're not going to get mirror smooth off any of these things. Uh, there's going to be, there's going to be you know, grinding marks in there, and there's going to be grinding marks in there. So when those two surfaces stick them together, it's not going to be a nice, nice plane, nice smooth plane. It's going to have some jagged edges on it. And depending on how jagged it is, those points going to have points on there, and those points are going to be brittle or, 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 or less durable, and they're going to break off, and your tool's going to get dull quicker. So the, sh the finer the wheel you can use to sharpen your tool to get those grit, get those scratches on these two surfaces as small as possible. It's going to give you a finer cutting edge out there. And that's where a lot of people hone. They'll use the diamond hone and they'll come in here and they'll hone, hone those surfaces on, on, on there after, the, after you sharpen it to get rid of some of those scratches. Okay, I'll just give you a brief example of, of sharpening some tools on each of these three, three systems. That's what's, where you want to start at, Buzz, over here. Okay, but what I, I primarily use this for my bowl gouges and also shaping tools that I'm going to be using on the tarmac. Uh, and then I use, I use this for sharpening my, my skews, and I've also been using it for scrapers also. And then I use this primarily for my spindle gouges. So I've got, a, uh, I've got one set up already. This is a, uh, a, a 5 8 uh, spindle gouge set up for uh, 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 Glenn Lucas's, uh, one of his profiles. So when you're, when you're sharpening a tool, you don't want to think about grinding the tool. All you want to do is just breathe, just lightly touch it. All you're doing is dressing that bevel when you're sharpening the tool. Can you show us a close-up of the profile of the tool? Go ahead. Put it on the paper there. So this is what Glenn Lucas calls his GL4. And I'll talk more about Glenn Lucas' stuff. But it, it, the, the wings are swept back, and it's got a con a convex profile on the nose, and it's got a, a, a 55 degree bevel on the nose. What degree? 55. 55. Mm -hmm. And I'll we'll get to the flutes too, but this, this is a parabolic flute. That's the flute that, that's recommended by most people that do the swept back wings like that recommend using a parabolic flute. And I've got examples of some other flutes here. I'll talk about more about that later. But when, you, when you're doing the sharpening, you don't want to think about grinding with a lot of force. You just lightly touch the wheel. Now, it will, you know, let me show you one other thing before it gets, before it gets too sidetracked. I'll just show you an example of, uh, of what, what you don't want to do, what you don't want to try doing. I see a lot of people, a lot of pictures of, of sharpening stations sitting in the middle of a workbench. Well, you're, you can't really get a ready. You can stand off to the side. That's my brain. You stand off the side and you can do that and then go over here like this and do this. The thing you don't want to do is stand back here like this and go try to go like this because you're not going to have any control over that point and you're, 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 you're it's going to be very awkward and you're just not going to have control. You, you're not be satisfied with the results that you get from it. So what I like to do on, on my my station at home, my station at home is on a on a on a isolated pedestal about the width of, of this, and it's just a square square station. I can stand off the side like this, and I can stand here like this and go back and forth 
and do the full sweep and not have that handle or not get in the way of the handle going back and forth. My preferred solution though is to have tools that the handle is, can be, is removable. And with that, I can stand right here and, and, and easily see it and I'm not, there's no handle there to, to get in my way. So for sharpening this, I just, just and you, you, when you hold it, you don't want to hold it back here on the, on the, on the shaft or I've seen a lot of pictures in, in magazines where you see you know, they're standing there like this. You don't want to hold it like that. You want to hold the, hold the grinding jig and, and, and just run it back and forth very lightly with, with very little pressure. And you can see I'll pass around. That, that's, uh, that's the 80 grit. 80 grit scratches on there. And I don't think I, I didn't, on the bowl gouge, I'm not too concerned, but I, I didn't, I have not dressed this bevel, or I mean, I haven't dressed the inside of the flute on that. So that, this is one of the, uh, the Benjamin Best tools out here. And, and that's what I recommend doing is starting with those, with the cheaper tools, and then you don't, not concerned, so concerned about grinding away steel. And you can practice with different grinds. The illustrative safety point, I unintentionally forget that that wheel is turning. Yeah, with with that balancing kit on there, those wheels will spin we'll for quite spin a long time. For quite yeah. some time, even mm -hmm. without. Them. Yeah. Okay. The next thing we'll do over here is on the sorby. And like I say, the the sorby, what I primarily use the sorby for is sharpening my skew. And it comes with with uh, down here. You can see on the plate down here, Buzz. It shows that the it shows you the on on the side here is is a plate. I don't know if you can go over there and see that plate over there on that side or not. But the the, the panel on the front. It gives a representation of the holes on this plate and over here, and that gives you the angles that those different holes will give you for that uh, platform. So I've got, what I've got is I've got this set on, when, when most of the times you talk about skews, you say that the, the length of your bevel, oh yeah, the length of your bevel should be about one and a half times the thickness of the, of the tool, which gives you about a 20 degree angle. And that's why instead of using the 15 that it shows here for excuse chisel, I'm using 20. And with, with this, this, is, this gives me the proper angle on the, uh, this, this holds the, the tool at the proper angle, and then the, the platform is going to give me this angle, and this is going to give me the skew angle. And that's pretty much all I need to do to sharp to keep it sharp. And I say that this is this is a 600 grit trizac belt. That little triangular jig, something that comes with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all all that. The only thing that doesn't come with it is is this one here. And it, it comes. The one it comes with is only about only that long. It just has the one hole for for spindle gouges. And this is the the longer uh, longer grind for bowl gouges. That that is separate. But everything else up here it comes with. And like I said, I didn't bring the 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 the, uh, the one, but it comes with one of these like this, and the, the casting looks very much the same as that. Okay, well, shall we? Over here, then we'll sharpen a uh, a spindle gouge. Uh, they, they, what they have available out here, they have 120, no, 80, is it 80? 80, 120, and 240 in aluminum oxide, which doesn't hold up well for high speed steel. It's meant for carbon steel. Yeah. It has, what they have out here, it, it, the, the available, availability from Sorby is, this, this is a zirconium belt, and this is a ceramic belt. And what they have out here is a ceramic belt. So it, it, comes, with, it comes with this 80 grit. So it's a zirconium belt, and it comes with a 120 grit aluminum oxide belt. But they have 120 and two, no, 120s. 120 the, the aluminum oxide is 80, 120, and 240. The ceramic and, and, uh, and Trizac, tri, Trizac belts come in 80 and 120. And then the, 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 the I said Trizac, this is a, Zirconium. Zirconium is this one. 
and this is ceramic. These come in 80 and 120. The, the Trizac belt comes in 600, I think 800 and 1200. There's, there's three different grits on the Trizac. That's a third party belt? Hmm? That's a third party belt? No, no this, it's from Sorby. Oh, okay. Yeah, all, all, those, all those are Sorby. Come, they're actually made in Germany. So Sorby doesn't make them, but yeah, they're, they're available through the Sorby dealers. Did you say aluminum oxide is not for high speed? No, it, it's for carbon steel, carbon, like your regular hand, hand chisels and, and, and planes and stuff like that. It'll work, but it just doesn't last very long. Okay. And while I'm still talking about this, my, I, I, most people like, you know, when, you, when you grind a skew on, on one of the wheels, you're going to come up with a convex bevel. And using a skew with a convex bevel gave me this. I never could get repeatable results or what are the results that I was looking for. So I started reading and the benefits of having a flat bevel on my skew. And since I went to the flat bevel on the skew, I much more, I like using my skew much more than I ever did before. Uh, so my first experience with a flat bevel was I had an old uh, Ryobi belt sander that I mounted upside down into a, a wooden pocket. And then I made a bracket, something like this, to mount the arm across the back of it that I could use to give me a flat bevel. Well, since I've got this, I don't need that Ryobi anymore. So if anybody would like to try a flat bevel, I've got that out in the truck. And it's yours for the taking. <coughs> you know, it's got the, it's got the wooden platform. It's got the screw holes to, about, to screw this onto. And when you, when you get that, you get an arm and you get this. So you need to buy that kit, and I think it's like $60 for that. And then they have the, they have the aluminum oxide belts out here. That's all they have for the, but it's a 7 by 20 water. I mean, 3 by 21. So like I say, it's, it's for the taking if anybody wants it south of my truck. Okay, so now we'll do a, a, um, a spindle gouge on, on the... Just a couple of passes like that is all you need to keep the edge sharp. Now this one, I have, I have dressed the bed with the flute on this one to get rid of some scratches. And you can see what the, uh, compare the, uh, now it does put a little bit of a burr in there. So what I do to get rid of that burr, I've just got a little diamond, diamond file that used to be available out here. And I'll just take that diamond file and just, just run it back and forth inside the flute to get rid of that little burr that's in there. But that's the, uh, I'm going to take it off there. You can look at the difference in the, in the scratch pattern on, on the, now this, the, the heel down here was probably done on one of my, on the dry grinder, but the, the, that's the scratch pattern off of, that came off of the, uh, the water wheel then. So that's all there is to sharpening tools. Anything else you want to say? Uh, no, I have a question for you, Dan. Yeah. I, I use the wool ring for everything, okay? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, and I got the CBM wheels from Ken Rizzo, okay? Uh, <clears throat> Am I missing? The, am I missing something by not having these other two? Yeah. Does it get your Does it get your tool sharp? Are you happy with what it does? Uh, it, 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 I turn well. I don't. I don't say, I, yeah, that's all you need then. You know. I I I I'm fascinated with tools. I'm a tool junkie. Okay. So. All right. All right. I, I, I was just wondering because I I see you have all that stuff. Yeah. I'm like, okay, am I missing something mm. here? Uh -huh. The only advantage I can see to the belt setup is the uh, skews. Mm. So you can. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, like I say, the flat, the flat barrel skew, I, I really enjoy using a skew now where I didn't enjoy using a skew before when I was doing it with the concave bevel. Is that because you don't want a convex? Convex, yeah. And my, my issue with, with, the, with the convex bevel is you got... Uh, yeah. Hmm. Kind of draws left-handed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Do it. <laughs> I got you back. Left-handed. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's what I draw a left-handed. You can draw the right hand and step away. Step over here. <laughs> do, do it backwards. That's supposed to look like a skew on your piece of wood. With a convex bevel, that point is continually trying to dig into the wood. And to keep from digging into the wood, you've got to put, push down the handle, and this has got to push that against the wood to keep it from digging in so far. Well, at the very least, you're going to get burnish marks back here with that sharp heel when you're trying to lever it to keep the point from digging in too far. And then people say you're supposed to ride the bevel. Well, if you really do ride the bevel and put a lot of pressure on it, you're going to end up with a surface like this. About the same frequency as the distance of that. 
And the more you push, the deeper the, the deeper it gets. But with, with, with the flat the flat bevel on the skew, I've never done never since when I used the skew before, I would about every two or three times I tried using this thing, it would, I would get a surface like that. But since I went to the flat bevel on the skew, I don't get a surface like that anymore. So even, even using the, uh, the, the Wolverine supplied, uh, you know, the bar that goes sideways. You put I've the, never tried using that. Okay. okay. What that is is it, it goes in the in the in the pocket like right. this, but instead of having a, a V back here, it's got a bar and it's got two pockets that separate right. at the angle. So when right. the skew is up there, it holds the the you thing like that. But it doesn't the hold side. the skew from rotating. You got to keep it from rotating. Right. Well, when you're standing back here like this, I can't see where that edge is touching up there. Gotcha. The thing, I, the thing that I really like about the Tormek is it came with this attachment here, which for, well, you could you could set the, uh, the the skew angle with this with this gauge here, the skew angle there. But the thing about this is it, it instead of depending on a flat surface for it to ride on, it clamps onto the side of the skew. It holds the skew from the side. And the way I set that, I'll put it down the workbench, and I've just got a little little square, and when I tighten it up, I hold the square up against that, the side of that, and that's what makes that's what makes it this to be in there straight, you know. So that point, the, the the cutting is there is parallel with this surface here, and then with that, that holds the skew, and and then holds it at a precise angle, and it gives you the same, you get the same thing on each side, but it gives you the convex shape. And now with, with the, uh, with the uh, Bosch belt sander that I used, with, this, with that arm on there, I was able to use this tool on the Bosch belt sander and get a flat bevel. So I used that, and, and it worked well for me. Um, and I just got intrigued by the, the Sorby that I got the Sorby. And, and I haven't, haven't figured out a way yet to put this on here, but even my, my concern was with, with a flat skew like this, it's easy to just put it against a flat surface and it's gonna be you don't have to worry about it, but a Sorby sells an oval skew. Well, there's no flat surface to rest it on. You have to hold it. Well, what I found is that with the belt down that way, you, this, this angle here is adjustable. Yeah. It's a screw in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. I can set it up here like this. And with up here like that, I can I can look down at this look down at the skew like that, and I can tell, make sure that my that I'm holding that at the proper angle on that belt. I can I can see exactly where that is hitting. But over here on 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 this skew, you know, I just I couldn't didn't it just didn't work for me. So that, that's that's sort of. Hey Dan. Yeah. On the attachments you put on there, I've heard one and three quarter inch back, and I've heard two inch back. It all depends on the person that's doing it. There, there's different, it, and I'm going to get. It all depends on how you use your tool. Okay. It's up to you what's going to work for you. Okay. Put it down a little bit. Okay. Uh, Dan, hmm? go back to question, or Eric's question on why you would use more than one tool. I find when I'm using the Wolverine system, if you use the tool too much and it starts getting too short, you can't put it on that little flat plate mm -hmm. and reach over to where you're at when you yeah. come with the other one. Well, then this is what you have to do here. That's one of the, one of the I want to talk about the, the, the tools, but one of the drawbacks of these cheaper tools is the flute's not very long. Right. And you run, run out of the, you, you're, nor you're normally clamping here on the top of the flute. Well, no, this, this is a, uh, this is a, a uh, from, no, this is a bodger from Highland. The same thing, you can't tell, this is a, this is a Benjamin Best, right, and that's right. a bodger, and they look like they came off the same, <laughs> same place. <laughs> uh, but the problem you have is that with, you know, with that, that flute not being very long, you run out of a clamping surface here, so what you have to do is, I, what I've done here is I've ground the flat, the, the, I want to make sure this flat is the same, pro, same plane, as the top of the, of the flute. So I just ground the flat back here, and now that gives me, I can move my clamping point back here farther and still be able to use it. Or you can just learn how to turn freehand. 
Well, I found a couple of tools that most of mine, I buy a bunch of each one, so I don't get that short, but I had some that people brought over. Mm -hmm. They want to do it, and it was just too yeah. short to do it. Yeah, and that, that's the only system I got is, is, is to, because uh, if you don't have any a flat clamping, so you don't have any reference, because if, if that tool is cocked in that jig, you're not going to, your wings are not going to be the same on both sides of the, on, on both sides of the, so you have to have, you have to have some reference when you clamp that, that jig down, that the tool is always going to be in that position, not like this, so you have to, always have to have something flat to clamp it onto. But the more expensive tools, here, here's, this is a, uh, uh, this is one of Stone Mountain or the, the signature tools out here. This this is a uh, a uh, David Ellsworth spindle. Guys, look how much longer the flute is. Thank you.